Welcome to the podcast on Encountering the Word. It's your moment to hear the Word of God and receive healing and transformation. Get ready to soar high as you encounter the Lord through His Word. Your day will never be the same. Well, greetings to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, welcome you all to the Encounter the Word podcast. And uh, it's been a joy for me to bring this series to you. Uh, and today we're going to be covering part two of this series on Grace Decoded. Uh, I trust that you were blessed by the word yesterday where we focused on John 1.17. Uh, and we spoke about how grace and truth came by the person of Jesus. And Moses was somebody who gave the law. And uh, there was a difference between, you know, Moses giving the law and grace and truth coming by Jesus Christ. So uh, we are living in a dispensation of grace where we put our trust and faith in the person of the Lord Jesus and not just his instructions. Uh, we put our faith and trust in what he is and who he is as a person. And uh, we love him and we have that relationship with him. Whereas the people in the Old Testament, they were given the law and they could not have that direct access to the heart of God or they could go boldly into the throne room of God and call God as their father. But they had to come under a certain law which was delivered by Moses. And, and this grace and truth that came by Jesus Christ is is a wonderful wonderful statement which john has made which really defines the whole uh, aspect of grace for us and uh, even as we continue to meditate on this uh, topic um, you know we're going to go to john chapter 2 and we're going to look at a few uh, verses from there to understand how we can unlock the grace of god um, if you look at john chapter 2 uh, in verse number one, it says that there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and uh, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. And his mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it and there were there six water pots of stone and after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece Jesus saith unto them filleth the water pots with water and they fill them up to the brim and he saith unto them draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it now we must understand this is a beautiful uh, you know, context or scenario of how the mother of Jesus stepped into the grace of the Lord Jesus. They were in a marriage and um, they ran out of wine and the mother of Jesus first went to her son and she said they have no wine and the response of Jesus was very interesting. He said, woman, what have I to do with thee? What have I to do with you? Mine hour is not yet come. So Jesus was in a time frame, in a timeline where the time had not come for him to demonstrate the supernatural yet or demonstrate the kingdom of God and the power of the kingdom of God yet. And yet, He's in a place where there is this woman, that's his mother, who comes to him and says they have no wine. Because there was an element of faith and trust that the mother had in the person of Jesus, in Jesus as a son of God and not as her own son. She did not approach Jesus as her own natural son, but she came to him respecting and honoring him as the son of God because it was she who was given the word and prophecy saying that you will birth the son of God so Mary had this understanding she had this revelation and therefore she approached him with confidence and even though she kind of got a very um, you know not so positive 
reply from Jesus. It's very interesting what the mother said to the servants. She says, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Now, she was moving in faith and she continued to move in faith even though she did not get a very favorable answer from her son. And sometimes you wonder, how do you process things in life when you don't have a favorable situation? You know, you're seeking God, but then you don't have a favorable uh, answer. You don't have a favorable situation. You don't, you're not in a place of favor. But something within you tells you, so keep moving on. Something within you tells you, keep pursuing God. Keep on living the faith life. Because there is something that happens when you continue to persist in the faith. And that is how you unlock the grace of God. And Mary did this beautifully in this passage of scripture because even though she did not receive a favorable answer from the Lord, she still instructed the servants at the wedding saying, do whatsoever he saith unto you to do, do it. Because the servants were under another instruction probably because they were given a contract to supply wine in that marriage by the one who hosted the marriage. But now, since they had ran out of wine, they had to now come up with a solution. And therefore, they had to heed to the instruction of somebody who was not hosting them. They had to heed to the instruction of somebody whom they had not uh, you know, uh, submitted to deliver the wine. In the sense, there was the marriage, uh, feast that was happening and the the host had given them a contract to supply the wine and they ran out of wine and yet they now had to come to a place where they had to heed to the instruction of the one who was just attending the marriage but it was Jesus the son of God so it was a very difficult situation but still they submitted to the instruction that Jesus gave and they acted in faith to the statement that the mother of Jesus made saying that whatsoever he saith unto you do it now that is how we unlock the grace of God people of God even though sometimes we don't feel like things are happening we still stick to the word of God we still believe in the word of God we still do what the word of God tells us to do what if you fail no do it again what if you fail two times do it the third time see that is how we unlock the things of God and that is how we live the life of grace sometimes because many a times people want everything easy when it comes to living the life of grace that we have been called to live in we think that everything is going to work out easily but not so sometimes you may not receive a favorable answer from your um, uh, authorities maybe you may not have a favorable situation where everything is working for you and everything is working against you but you still continue to persist in faith and and you keep on believing that something can happen and mary tapped into the side of Jesus that nobody had tapped into through her faith and obedience. She tapped into the supernatural side of Jesus by causing him to do something that he was not prepared to do. Oh, I'm telling you, this is something so powerful. That's what grace causes us to do. Grace gives us the access to tap into realms in the spirit. Grace gives us the access to tap into the supernatural, to tap into divine health, to tap into divine life, divine healing, to tap into the prosperity, the abundance that we were never qualified to firstly tap into. And that's what Mary tapped into. She's tapped into the supernatural side of Jesus. If she had seen Jesus as a natural son, she would have never approached him for this situation. 
she would have tried to logically you know do some things but she knew there was a supernatural power in the house there was a supernatural power available for the problem that this wedding was going through where they lacked wine and jesus was moved by that kind of faith and he said to the servants fill the water pots with water and they filled them and they were able to obey the voice of the lord um you know they were not given the outcome but they were just given the process yeah sometimes god may give you the process and not give you the outcome instead he said fill the water pots with water that was the process and if you were a smart and intelligent servant you would have probably asked okay what happens next after you fill it with water no one asked him a question they followed the process when god gives you the process he knows what is the outcome he knows the bigger picture more than you know the bigger picture he knows what is going to come out of it even though it looks like a small seed today in your spirit the lord has already seen how big a tree it is going to be in the future even though it looks like a small dream today god already knows how big this dream is going to be one day so you see he may be giving you the process today but are you willing to submit to the process so that you can see the outcome and the result amen and when we submit to the process the outcome and the fruit and the manifestation is ours to enjoy amen and they fill them up to the brim which means they obeyed him to the word they they followed the process to that point and then he said unto them the second thing draw out now and bear it unto the governor of the feast now that was the place where they now saw the supernatural miracle because now the first level of faith was to fill them with water the second level of faith that they needed now was to draw out because they knew what they had filled the pots with in the natural they had filled it just with water so what went in was water but what was coming out was wine so sometimes you may be putting some effort in the natural and you may think that this is not enough this is not sufficient but what you don't realize is what you are sowing in the natural what you are processing in the natural what you are working for in the natural is soon going to turn supernatural the water is going to turn into wine if you have the faith to believe and continue to still believe amen continue to still persist because you are going to draw out soon from that and when you draw out you will see that there is reward for your faith there is reward for the process that you have followed when they drew out they poured it and gave it to the governor and then they saw it was wine it was not water so when he's telling you to fill them with water he has already seen the wine and sometimes you may not see the wine and you're only seeing the water i want you to be encouraged people of god it is time that you begin to tap into the grace of god because the grace of god will help you to see the things that you need to see this season the grace of god will bring the reward the grace of god will help you tap into the supernatural realms the grace of god will cause you to tap into the greater things that god has for you so have faith continue to persist continue to grow because what you're going to draw out is going to be the best wine preserved for the wedding when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was he said unto him actually the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and he said unto them every man at the beginning doth serve good wine and men have well drunk then that which is worse is kept for the end 
but you have kept the good wine the best wine until now wow so sometimes it's good to wait because god preserves the best for the end in the end you will have the love alongside god amen because the best is coming out of you even though it seems like the process is difficult even though it seems like the road map is difficult even though it seems like everything seems cloudy everything seems hazy around you follow the process keep filling the water keep filling yourself with the word of god keep filling yourself in the spirit because soon the best that is in you is about to be poured out for this generation to taste and declare that god is amazing god is powerful god is glorious hallelujah so i pray that you will encounter the word of god this day people of god in a powerful way may the grace of god locate your home may the grace of god locate your business may the grace of god locate your ministry may the grace of god locate your marriage may the grace of god locate your finances may the grace of god locate your health may the grace of god locate every part of your life and you will know that god is good to you because he is going to bring the best out of you because of the grace that he has put upon your life trust in the grace that is upon your life trust in the grace that is upon your life trust in the grace that is upon your life god is good goodbye we will meet again tomorrow for another powerful word share this podcast with somebody if you've been blessed by this word may the lord use this word to encounter somebody Much love. God bless.